Hello and welcome to another episode of the iPad Lettering Show. My name is Karen. I am from iPad Lettering, bringing you the best tips and tricks about anything iPad related. In today's tutorial, I want to show you how you can adjust the Apple Pencil pressure curve in Procreate. This is a question that I get asked a lot and usually my standard answer is that I'm actually just leaving the pressure curve as the default setting but um, I think especially as a beginner it might be quite handy to know how you can adjust the curve to set it up for your own preferences. You can find that setting for the Apple Pencil pressure curve if you click on the actions icon and then go to edit pressure curve and you can see at the moment it is just set to the default setting so let's see how we can change this so that you might feel a little bit more comfortable with um, these settings now to start with let's turn the visibility of these layers off and then create a new layer and maybe change the color as well choose a nice purple all right, now let's have a look at what happens when we open our pressure curve. You can see here, this is the default setting. If you, you can change it around like this, you can have one or more points here and you can make it as adventurous as you would like it to be. And what you notice as well, when I start moving this around, you can see that there is a gray background that sort of moves up and down. And this is how you can see how much pressure you are putting on your iPad with the Apple Pencil. So this is how you can test what happens when you press harder onto the iPad or if you don't put a lot of pressure on it that this moves up and down and this is a good way for you to test um, how you want to set this curve up. So let's reset it again. I don't recommend doing this by the way this is creating very unpredictable results. So what I recommend to start with is that you keep the pressure curve really smooth. So let's reset this again. So if you're someone who doesn't like putting too much pressure on your iPad for whatever reason, I recommend that you move the pressure curve sort of over there. So what this means now with a lot less pressure, you get a lot thicker stroke. Let's see what th this looks like now. So. The thin upstroke will be exactly the same. This doesn't have a lot of pressure, but then the thick downstroke is going to become thicker a lot faster with not too much extra pressure. So now I'm not pressing a lot harder than I have in the first with the first stroke, but my stroke gets thicker quite a lot quicker. So if I, I, could, I can press really, really hard as well. This is now pressure probably nine. And you can see, and this one is pre pressure maybe five. And you can see the thickness is almost exactly the same. Now, one of the disadvantages of having the pressure curve like this is that um, it's a lot harder to create a smooth stroke because I find it easier to put more pressure on my iPad to control the smoothness of my stroke. But you can see now because I'm putting more pressure on, I'm, I'm not getting the thin and thick strokes so much now. So what we can do in this case now, let's reset the curve and now let's move it a little bit further this way. So now what this means is that I can put a lot more pressure on the iPad until the stroke gets thicker. So now let's try this and the thin up stroke this is going to be exactly the same again. The difference here is that I can put quite a bit more pressure on the iPad before the stroke gets thicker. So now for the downstroke, so I'm going to put on the same pressure that I put on when I made that stroke there, but you can see it doesn't get too thick. So now to create that thick downstroke, I have to press reasonably hard. But what that means as well is that the stroke is actually a lot more even. So now if I want to go do like a little squiggle again, you can see that the difference between the thick and the thin is a lot more pronounced. If I have my pressure curve set in that second way. So now let's look at the pressure curve again and see what else we can do. Um, let's reset it again. This is the default setting. So what we've done, we've have moved it this way, which makes it more sensitive. And then we also moved it that way, which makes it less sensitive. 
And there's obviously um, a large variety of combinations of different settings that you could try out. You could also try moving it this way. So it's not very sensitive to start with, but then it becomes a lot more sensitive towards the end. Um, that's definitely something you might like to try out. And then maybe even write a word just to see what that looks like. So I'm going to write hello. And you can see now the difference between the thin upstroke and the thick um, downstroke is quite pronounced if I have this setting. So if you like this type of lettering, then definitely try out this setting. But also it means that sort of the round um, in the O might be a little bit more difficult to um, achieve. So let's reset this and write the word again to see what the difference is. And you can see now the difference between um, thin upstroke and thin downstroke is not quite as pronounced. So this is me putting the exact same pressure on my iPad as I have done up here as a demonstration purpose. Of course, I could achieve a similar result that I have had here, but just, you know, not putting that much pressure on the iPad. But then it makes it a little bit harder to control my strokes. So there you have it. These are the different settings of the Apple Pencil pressure curve. I really recommend that you try it out and see which one works best for you. You've got a little bit of a starting point now. Um, let me know if you have any questions. Please give me a thumbs up if you like this video and subscribe to my channel so that you're not missing out on any future Procreate and iPad related tutorials. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.